That's what I'm trying to make. That's what I'm trying to make. That you know he's not you know he's not the young phenom he was back in 1996, 97. Right. Am I that old? You know, if it was that, you know, like, okay, he's a minor, he's an oblique strain, you know, he's young, he can bounce back quickly, no problem. Now that he's 120 years old, as far as by golf standards, uh, not so easy to come back from. The more Correct. older you get, the more tougher it is to heal. Yes. And especially, you know, all his injuries he's had, Lewis, you know, he's had the back, he had back issues, he's had, what, three or four back surgeries? So, yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't have... You know, a lot of, it, again, as you say, as you get older, you're, you know, it takes longer for you to heal. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I would be back, with a, you know, on an oblique, if he had a, trained his oblique last week. I don't, you know, I don't, I mean, what does he need to come back for other than to win? He wants to, he wants to beat Jack Nicholas's record of majors. That's what he wants to come back for, to do that. That's the one thing that he cares about. I want to win major championships. I think he's what three majors away from beating, or four majors away from beating uh, Jack's record, right? Yeah. Jack has eighteen, so he needs four to pass him. Ooh, that's gonna be uh, hard. Right. I know, I know, he looked good at the Masters, but at this rate, gonna... Brooks Kafka might beat you. No, Brooks is the man, dude. Brooks is the man. I agree with you on that one. I mean, if the Tiger keeps on putting, you know, getting injured and playing our tournaments, Kafka might get fresh you in two years. All right, maybe three. Yeah, because Brooks, as Brooks won back-to-back PGAs. Yeah. He won back-to-back this year, and then he almost almost won three U.S. Opens in a row. He finished second place, you know, mm-hmm. at, at that age. So, I mean, at, that's right, at Pebble. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he might he might be taking over that major record team, too. Is well is, is Brooke uh, the next Jack or uh, Eldrick? I mean Tiger. Yes, I used his real name. Yeah, I mean you could say that, Lewis. I mean you sooner or later Tiger's got to pass the torch to somebody. Somebody's got to be the next big, you know, major winner on tour, and it might it might be Brooke yeah. Skepka. Yeah. Well, you know, when he does retire, maybe he can always try to be a commentator on Holy Moly. Ew. Uh. <laughs> yeah, or as I call it, miniature golf on crack. Yes, there you go. There you go. That's exactly what it is. I've I've got to get back out on the driving range. I've had a golf tournament in about a month, so I got to get back out and start playing a little bit, get my game in shape for that. Well, I'll do it before it gets winter, you know, because in the winter time you may not want to be on the course. Well, on, well, down here, I mean, honestly, it doesn't get that cold, except that this golf gets more expensive during the season, but it's been... Oh, that's right. You're in Florida. I, I thought you were in New yeah. England. Yeah. It rains. It rains every day, I know. you know, here in Florida, so it's hard to get out there and play this time of the year. And, you know, thank goodness we haven't had any hurricanes yet, so that's good. At least we can look on the bright side of that down here. I mean, it's rained all Well, you can always put a retractable roof. That deal, yeah. Well, see, and I, I mentioned that the other day. I think that we need to have some indoor driving rings in Florida. So you just close the roof, and we can still play, you know. But who's, you know, what genius is going to come up with that idea? We'll have to wait and see. Well, how much does it cost? That I do not know. That I have no idea about. After I people call my people, we'll figure something out. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds Just good. An idea. <laughs> How's the weather yeah. in New Jersey? Well, um, we've had our share of rain as well. Um, we had some um, little bit of storms uh, last week, but for this most of this week, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. Good. And, and we now hand August, mid August. And you, your Yankees are still kind of dominating the division so far, especially against the Baltimore. Whatever you want to call them. I saw a uh, Twitter thing the other day. Some guy tweeted that the Orioles don't belong on the field with any major league team. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I yeah, thought they were. I thought they were. I thought they were a double A team. What didn't the Yankees score like seventy something runs against them this year? In the, in the all yeah. Games? Yeah. Yeah. That's they massacrated them. 
And then what they got? They had the number one overall pick in the draft this past year, so we'll have to see if they're going to get the number one overall pick again. Oh, it's a Getting a number one draft pick doesn't mean a thing. It's not going to necessarily improve your team. Nope. Because in baseball, you can get sent to the minors. So, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Getting a number one draft pick in any sport means absolutely nothing unless you perform on the field. If Correct. you don't, you're going to be a loser. Correct. 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 With a capital L. Hmm. How do you spell loser? O R I O. Never, never mind. <laughs> yes. All right. So you have the Ravens up six to nothing. As I'm turning my, you know, turning away here. From, yeah. See, there's no. Sean Kaiser's in the game, so no Aaron Rodgers. So again, I guess we're not going to see the starters until the next. Not until game three. That's when the starters come out. Yeah. Game three is when it really matters. See. Jets are still up. Yeah. Yeah. A three is when you separate the men from the boys. Correct. Correct. Well, I always thought so. Jacksonville is losing to Philadelphia seven nothing. So that's mm. the return of Nick Foles to Philly. Um, and Oakland's up seven nothing over the Cardinals. I haven't got a chance to watch. Um, any hard knocks? What's going on on that show? I haven't had a chance to see it either, but uh, uh, they're making a report of the um, of the football player who um, had suffered frostbite. You mean Antonio Brown? Antonio Brown. Oh my goodness! And he was showing the picture on uh, the account. He was uh, showing in front of the camera. Oh boy, it was nasty. Ugh. Well, I mean, in, in part, he's to blame for not wearing the proper footwear. That's right. Yeah, so he's to blame. And you know what? I actually, Trump- in double trouble this week because it turns out that, uh, you know, he hired a uh, – this was happening in a restaurant in uh, Florida where he rented a, where he rented a uh, complex uh, back in last year, and he owes a substantial bill of more than $38,000. What a dope. Lewis, I, yep, I saw that, Lewis, yeah. You're exactly right. I, I saw that the other day. I did, I did. I did see that pop up. So he's in double trouble for not only his feet or whatever he did for that cryo thing that he used for therapy, but that he owes $38,000. Yep. Did he spend that on the chirotherapy? No. Oof. Boy, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it, folks? Well, and I, I mean, you know, everyone thinks. You know, I, I think the Steelers are much better off. I mean, as far as the drama goes on, they're much better off. Yeah. Without him. Hey, now he's the Raiders. Well, look, every football team has at least one player that's always going to cause some drama. Absolutely. 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 You know, and the Cowboys, you know, they have their share too. Oh, boy. Well, here's the question I have with that whole thing with Zeke Elliott. Okay, you have Zeke. You got Dak Prescott, and who's the wide receiver that's do a contract for them too? Alex uh, Cooper. I'd be Amari Cooper. Right, Cooper. So now the, I, I heard a rumor the other day that they're going to sign Cooper, and they're going to sign Z before they sign uh, Dak. Do you agree with that? Right. Yeah, I agree with that, but I don't think that you know that Zeke is going to hold out for you know a long period of the season. But Jones says, "Hey, look." I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if it did go past uh, this uh, the uh, opener, but I'm but I'm but uh, I'm going to still negotiate with it after. But I don't think it's going to take uh, that long. I think with the uh, before week three is up, maybe that you know something will be a breakthrough. Well, I mean, you know, they're predicted to win the a- the NFC East this year. Yes, I mean, they are. Do you, think that, do you think they're the favorite, Lewis, in that division? Because I do. I do. I do. Oh, absolutely. I they are Absolutely. Now, again, they a lot of them have them to go to the Super Bowl. Do you believe that they have the team to go all the way? Well, maybe not a Super Bowl. NFC Championship, maybe. Super Bowl, uh, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little skeptic on that. But stranger things have happened, of course. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I mean, take I mean, last year's I, AFC Championship game. Oh, boy. Yep. And the well, Saints I think, are still complaining. I mean, oh, yeah, well, I like I said, I had a – Dan Patrick had Drew Brees on a couple weeks ago, and he said that it still stings. Oh, yeah. What happened? What happened? Oh, yeah. Well, it's Dan Patrick. <laughs> Look, I'm first generation ESPN, so, uh, you know, I know all about that. Yes. Yep. Well, I, the, the one the one guy I think we all miss on ESPN is Stuart Scott, by far. He, he oh, was, yeah, of course. He was the one who, you know, I, I grew up with Chris Berman. And, and those Third guys. eye, boomer. Stuart Scott was like, he raised the level, you know, to a different... I remember Christopher Brad Hare. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Booyah. Yeah. Who was the other side of the pillow? I always love that. Uh, love that one. That was also, yeah. uh, just just a, a little tie-in with that. There was a thing on, there was a question on Celebrity Feeling a few last year, and the question was, name some word with the word with boo, and it was yah. I'm like, oh, boy. I love it. Boo, and the, and the response was, yeah, okay. My girlfriend was like, what? <laughs> Boo, yeah. Yeah. Well, my girlfriend doesn't, doesn't really get it. <laughs> my mother doesn't get it either. <laughs> well, I guess that unless, unless you watched the sports center and knew who he was, they yes. know, they know. They wouldn't, they wouldn't understand that at all. Well, actually, I remember that for also when they did the commercial when they had ESPN in the magazine. Yes. And yeah. I had and I had a subscription to it. My brother did and I, and uh, I'm sorry to say that that magazine does not exist anymore. They, they still have it, right? I mean, nope. They still make, no, they don't make the magazine. Okay. No. How has it changed in 20 years? Yeah, it's unfortunate. We've lost a lot of good publications over the years. That way, good players, good pot, good players, yep. good broadcasters. Yep. Well, I guess it's just part of growing old, I guess. Yeah, that's that's the one of the hard things about it is you know you you end up you know as a young kid you follow a broadcaster or a player and. and you get to your middle age years and you're gone. You're like, wait a minute, what the heck? You know, I'm gonna yeah. miss it. You know, I mean, I mean, when Berman and um, Scott Lay and all started out in Gumble, they were all in their twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were fresh out of college. And I, you know, I, Lewis, I, I don't, I didn't, you know, in Gully did a lot before I was even born. Oh yeah, and I got to listen to him. I got to listen to his last game when he did it for the Dodgers. So, but I mean, he was a great one, a great broadcaster, yeah, especially for broadcast. the World Series games. Yep. yep. You know, and of course, some of the most memorable World Series games too. Well, and then I, you know, one that I don't want to bring up with the 1986 World Series. You mean the Harley bag? You got so bad that's, that's the one. That's the one. Yes, that's. Here comes and, tonight, that's winning. And you know, Lewis, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know that he he was the one that called uh, the White Clark's immaculate catch. Ah, don't go that there. Oh. that still <laughs> makes me sick. Were you cheering for the Bengals that year? The Cowboys. Oh, it's the Cowboys. That's right. The cow. That's right. That's right. Broke the heart of a living year old boy. <laughs> that was. I had two uh, disappointments in that in a three month span. Ooh, well, that's rough. Well, um, like I said, three month span, not not in the same, not in the same year, but in the same calendar year. Because three months before that, the Dodgers beat my Yankees after winning the first two games, and the Dodgers came back and won the last four and eighty one World Series, and I was heartbroken all spring. All was that when the Dodgers were still in Brooklyn? No, no, that was when we had the uh, sensation of uh, Fernando. Oh, yes, okay, okay, okay. Him. Venezuela. 81. And I thought I knew- for sure that the, the Yankees were going to win that series. We're up two games to nothing, 
on our turf, and then we went to L.A., and then we just lost it. 